so some uh, backstory. When I was 13, uh, something changed in my life. Uh, I was incapable of doing anything right. In my mind, in my heart, nothing I did turned out. Everything was a failure. I don't know why. Anything I tried, I was sure I could have done better. And it didn't take very long to go from thinking the things I did were failures to thinking I was a failure. And from thinking that I was a failure, it didn't take very long to thinking that I had no worth and that the world would probably be better off if I was not. So I was 15 when I started thinking that. And it was hard. I was very fortunate that we didn't have access to firearms in my home because that probably would have made it just too easy for me. But I would think about it most days. Wouldn't everything be better if I wasn't here? Wouldn't everything go easier if I just wasn't making everything worse? I was so worried, though, that everything I did was wrong and I failed at everything that I couldn't bring myself to actually try. Because as much as I was sure that I was making the world worse, I was terrified of anyone ever finding out that this is who I truly was. I was terrified that if anyone ever found out that they would of course agree with me, that yeah, I was in fact a worthless person. That there really wasn't a reason for me to be around. And so from that point on, I hid as best I could. Because no one could ever know about what was inside of me. Every morning I would wake up and I would put on a false face and I would go to school and I would do my work and I was sure I had convinced everyone that I was this good kid and I truly knew I was. And I was exhausted. It is hard to pretend while being terrified at the time. But I was functioning. I was managing. I got through the days despite the fact that I didn't want to, and I made it to college. And I started in college as an engineering major, and I went from functioning to not functioning. I couldn't do it. I didn't have the energy, I didn't have the mental capacity, I wasn't smart enough, I wasn't strong enough. It was too much. And so I would hurt myself. I would hit my head off of things. I would punch myself in the leg until my thigh would spasm. And I was convinced that these are all things that I truly deserved because why was I even here? After the first semester of my sophomore year, I was failing as an engineer, and I couldn't do it anymore. But what was most important was making sure no one ever knew why. And so when I came home over Christmas break, it was just that the work was too much. I wasn't as smart as I thought I was. Maybe I'm not cut out for this. And everyone around me remembered the fact that I had been working at a Christian campground for a few years. And they said, why don't you try religion? And I couldn't help but think that this was the stupidest suggestion. <laughs> How am I supposed to study religion when at best I'm sure God was disappointed? in who I was. I was thinking that the people around me, I had just 
deceived them well enough that they thought this was a good idea. I also couldn't explain why I couldn't do it. And so I went back to school, I changed my major, and I struggled. I made the best friend I have ever made in my life. Never told him. Still. I believe he suspected. <coughs> because whenever other people would talk about me, they would say, John is just so loud. And he would say, you don't see him most of the time when he is quiet and sitting on the couch. Because it was hard. And you're so tired to do anything. I was managing, but I was managing because I was still hurting myself when I needed to. I was still doing things that I shouldn't. I was convinced that God's disappointment in me was less than the fear that would come if I ever told anyone how I felt. I graduated. And I went to seminary, because what else am I going to do? And the entire time, I feel like the biggest fraud. Because here are all of these people who have clear calls on their life, and here I am believing that I shouldn't even be here, and sure that God doesn't want me to be here either. It was in seminary that I warped a bit of theology around myself. The idea that God is so graceful and so loving that he couldn't possibly be disappointed in me, but at the same time, God knows that I ruin everything. But God will take what is bad and turn it ultimately to good. So maybe God is taking the garbage that I make and is using it for something better. I struggled and I was terrified. I meet a very nice uh, lady and we start dating and we're getting a bit serious, and then I break it off, because I'm sure that the closer she gets, the more likely it is that she is going to be hurt, that she is going to find out who I really am, and will have wasted her time, her energy, and live with her thought. She did not let me. <laughs> And so we were married. <laughs> I thought, maybe this is what I'm supposed to do. That I am worthless, a failure, but maybe I can talk about hope to people. Because hope is really the only thing that I was clinging to. This hope that God will take the awful, terrible things that I do and is going to make something wonderful out of them. It is a hope that I was clinging to desperately. But I was absolutely, 100% convinced that my wife could do better, my kids could have a better father, and at some point in time, if they ever found out, the shame and regret would be too much. I was exhausted. But I had done this for so long, I didn't know what else to do. I had led a lie for so long, it was just easier. It was the first thing I thought of, and the voice that was telling me how awful I was no longer sounded like someone else, but it was mine. And I was tired. 
So this was me for almost 20 years. Convinced that I did nothing right, convinced that the world would be better without me, convinced that it was pain that I inflicted upon myself is deserved. And living in the abject fear that if anyone ever found it, I would be shamed and judged but that I deserve those things. And then Beth comes home one day from Niederfest, where they had talked about suicide. And she sits down on the couch and she tells me the statistic that she told all of you. And before I can stop myself, I look at her and I say, I've thought about killing myself. Did you know that? Suddenly, every fear that I ever had was coming to the surface. That this was the moment. This is the moment when she would look at me with regret and shame, and it would all be over, and I would have absolutely deserved it. And there was nothing I could do because the door that I had kept so securely locked on the darkness within me, I had slipped and let a crack of light through. And I was horrified. And instead of shame or regret, I was asked questions. When did you start feeling like this? How does it normally manifest? How do you feel when this happens? Does it happen unpredictably, or do you know when? And the more we talked, the better I got. We made a deal that if I ever wanted to hurt myself, I would talk to her first. We made an agreement that if I was ever just too exhausted to get off the floor, that I would let her know and she would give me help. And with every bit of light that I let into that room, things got just a little bit better, a little bit better. And then finally, I was told, you know, maybe you should talk to someone else besides just your wife and others. And so I went to counseling. When you've spent 20 years of your life lying about something, it is hard to then talk to people. And so the first few times I went, I went against everything that I had told myself was true, and I talked about things that I didn't want to. And I shared things that I didn't want to, and each word, the light, got a little bit brighter in that room. I would love to stand up here and say that I am absolutely cured. <laughs> but no one is so foolish as to believe that that's how this works. I would love to stand up here and say that I am not scared anymore, but I am absolutely terrified. I am someone who is trained to stand up here and speak. This is the most scared I have ever been as a altar. I am terrified that all those old fears that I had are going to be made true. I am terrified that suddenly talking about this will make you treat me differently. As though perhaps I'm made of glass, or even worse, that suddenly something makes sense that you always suspected. And you can't believe that anyone would ever let me up here. Or worse, that you can't believe anyone would ever let their kids hang around me. Because who who wants their child to be around someone who has hurt themselves in the past? I am terrified that this will somehow create shame and judgment for my wife. That marrying someone who is depressed and has thought of killing themselves will be a mark against her as a pastor, as though she should have been able to pray all the way. I am not great 
that I'm not just functioning in. We worship the God who we are told is the light of life. A God who says that the light of Christ cannot be overcome by any darkness. And I spent 20 years telling myself that the darkness I had was too big, was too great, was too powerful, was too much for anyone else. We worship a God who gives us grace upon grace. And as terrified as I am, this is not a house of fear or shame. This is the house of God. This is the house of light, of Christ. No power that is greater than our fears could ever be. If you are struggling, if you are scared, if you have a voice telling you, you cannot share this, that is not the truth. As the truth of Christ is not found in the darkest of our souls, it is found when we let the light shine. It is found when we are honest about ourselves with the people around us. It is found when our fears are set aside. Because grace and truth are more important. I am still struggling with an iron better. And I don't know if you know someone or if you yourself are in need, but you do not walk this path by yourself. And if you are wondering exactly how showing your scars will be, you can come talk to me in about a week. I think by then I'll have a good idea. We worship a God who took on flesh, who knows what it means to be fragile, who knows what it means to be a person who struggles, who fights, who has to claw at every scrap of hope that there is. We worship a God who tells us that above all else, we are loved. That above all else, we were created in the light of God. That above all else, there is no darkness inside of us that could ever be bigger or more powerful than Christ. And if you struggle to believe that, I get it. I spent so much of my life disbelieving that as well, but it is so much better. Do not carry this by yourself. So I want to encourage all of you. If you're struggling, if you know someone who's struggling, do not carry that darkness by yourself. If you are hurting, if you are afraid, do not carry that darkness by yourself. It is not your burden solely to shoulder. And there is no shame that can exist in the house of God. There is no fear that can exist in the light of Christ. And I say that as someone who is still scared. I am better. I am not merely functioning day to day, and I still have days where I am struggling. But I am no longer alone. inside of me take control. I no longer let it have that much power. I no longer rely on lies to carry me through the day. And I hope, if nothing else, maybe this would give you a bit of light as well. A light that you can share. A light that will help you have the courage to share with someone else. Because we say that we are a family of God, that we are brothers and sisters in Christ. What better place than this to let our shame evaporate in the power of God's divine presence? I am still struggling. I am still scared. But my 
struggles and my fears and my shame are not bigger than my faith anymore. I offer you that hope. Let us pray. Awesome and gracious God, we thank you and we praise your holy name that you are not a God of fear or shame, but a God of light and love. That you are a God of truth, not the truths that we tell ourselves, but the truth that is found in the light. Not the truth that we have found ourselves to believe that lead us to hide and to be afraid, but the truth that carries us out of the darkness and into the healing light that we have. God, please give us all the courage and the peace to seek help. Not only from you, but from the brothers and sisters that you have gathered around us, from the people that you have connected us to in love with grace. Help us to trust in you and one another more than our fears or our lives. Help us to seek our truth so we may no longer struggle or be afraid. And God, I am so very grateful that I am able to be here to stay and say these words. Thank you.